So I like doing uh, uh, cancelling the beliefs. I think it's really, really, when you're doing cancelling beliefs, it's really good to let go of the idea of causality because that will really supercharge the results. Like if you've got like an illness or you've got like a negative relationships or a negative relationship with money or relationships, believing in causality, meaning that the outside world has power. Because power, power comes from the inside, you see, or the whole world is manifesting from the power of consciousness. Or you could, uh, you could say, out of the light comes form or out of the non-dual light comes dualistic form. So that's very, very, um, that's really, really important to know because the whole world trains you to believe that outside things have the power. Like, um, like uh, science, for example, science, you know, if you take this drug, uh, it'll cure, can you know, it'll, it'll cure this. Or um, if that planet is, is uh, you know, if the moon's up, then this means this is going to happen in your life. So these are all like causal things. The ego believes in causality. Like if you eat, I don't know, like uh, if you eat, oh yeah, here's a good one. Like if you eat sh too much sugar, you'll get diabetes or you might become hypoglycemic. So here's the thing, is that everything is actually beliefs within the collective ego. And then we can pick up them. I mean, th these are often shared beliefs for hundreds of years in the collective ego, but they're just beliefs. And we believe them off each other. And so we all, we all are subject to the same beliefs. So for example, if, um, like if in the newspapers they suddenly say there's a new bird flu, or, you know, or there's a new pig flu, or whatever, and they describe the symptoms in the newspapers and people read that, and they do, they print it enough, then lots of people will start to have bird flu. And that's because they'll believe it. And so they'll create the symptoms within themselves. And so, um, and, and the same thing with, um, the same thing with um, medicines. Like if you get a, if you get a doctor in a white coat and he gives you a sugar pill and he says like, this is guaranteed to cure your cough. You know, we've done lots of clinical research, it's got 100% success rate. And if a doctor does that to like 100 patients and gives them a sugar pill, uh, you'll find that a, high, you know, a reasonable percentage of the patients will just like, their coughs will go because they believe the doctor. It's called the placebo effect. So, so this go, goes, to, goes to show the power of belief. And actually it goes to show that actually belief is more is the thing that's creating the thing, the result. So once, once you know that the power is in, if you, if you cancel a belief, because when you hold a belief, it's like if God is the light of consciousness and you hold a belief that, you know, I'm clumsy, then that belief, if you believe it, I'm clumsy, the light of consciousness manifests that in your experience. So if you just delete that belief, uh, and, uh, then you lose your clumsiness. You see, so you just delete the belief and you just release the thing. So in, as you release your beliefs, you return to the state of infinite consciousness, which is not limited by the limited belief. And a lot of these beliefs are individual beliefs and a lot of them are collective belief systems held within consciousness. So this is the thing of, uh, I'll share, you know, like I, I cancelled my belief in gout and my gout talk stopped. I cancelled my belief in kidney failure, I had a transplant, cancelled my belief in asthma, I was discharged from the asthma clinic. Dr. Hawkins had more things that he cancelled his belief in, because these are just beliefs within one's ego or the collective ego of humankind. Cancelled his belief in hyperglycemia. So I'm like a biochemist. So if, if it, like scientists believe that if you've got hyperglycemia, if you eat sugar, your, your blood sugar will spike up and then spike rapidly down and you'll have the shakes. But actually that's not true, that's just a belief. Even though if you believe it, you do have those symptoms. So like Hawkins just cancelled his belief in hyper, it's not real, it's just a belief system within the collective. Uh, you can talk on camera if you don't mind talking on camera. Um, I mean by breathing air, you know, I believe breathing air 
I need to be there to live. Is that a belief system? Well, I mean, that, that, that's part of the manifest. Um, uh, does, does the limitless consciousness need to... Does your essence... Will your essence die? It won't die. I mean, these, these are like... Um, so when you get to... Like, if you're at a certain level of consciousness, you're subject the, to the laws, yeah, to those levels of consciousness. So once you get to the higher levels of consciousness, like if you go to... Um, to levels uh, uh, getting towards uh, level 600 to 1000 there are actually reports you know of mystics you know that um, you can just put them in a coffin if you look in buddhist literature put them in a coffin and they can stay without air for for huge periods of time you can slow the metabolism down do all kinds of things also if you look at indian literature see once you're at a low level of consciousness uh, you know, you're still quite subject to what other people are subject to. Once you get to the higher vibrations of consciousness, all the laws that seem to govern people at low level of consciousness start to dissipate. So now you can start to be at two places at the same time. Uh, or, you know, the miraculous healings, like uh, Mother Teresa. So a person, um, I believe this was how Mother Teresa was awarded her sainthood. So a person with cancer, and, and I could be wrong on this, so I'm not an expert, but a person with cancer just went in the presence of uh, Mother Teresa and then the cancer just disappeared. So, so that kind of thing is a bit like, well, uh, can, can life exist without air? I mean, generally, if you're at a low level of consciousness, if you try and stop breathing, your body will fall over. But once you get to the levels of the saints, and once you get to the levels of the mystics, where they can be in two places at the same time, where cancers can spontaneously disappear within a split second, you're no longer in the realms of, of, of the material belief systems. Mm -hmm. Now, if a normal human being, if you just say to a normal human, stop breathing, uh, they're not at that advanced levels of consciousness, they're probably just going to, their body's just going to drop down. Mm -hmm. Or they're just you know, going, to, they're going to be pretty upset. But once you start connecting to the immense levels of light and power at those high levels of consciousness, like all of this stuff, that doesn't doesn't work. So um, so from the level of well, it's, good, it's a good question, but you know, so for me it took me like years to cancel my belief in gout because it's such a strong belief system before these things would disappear. So obviously it's a good question, but actually the, these laws which you think are concrete actually start to disappear when you get to very advanced levels because everything is made out of consciousness. So when you're vibrating at 1,000, when you're vibrating at enlightenment, you know, things like the miraculous actually happen, which you can't explain. Like you might have, a person may have cancer one day and it may disappear within, within, the next, within a day. Or a person, you might see a person and they might, also someone else in another part of the world might see the same person. So that's not really, um, that's not, uh, so they start to break down the higher the level of consciousness goes. And you start to get reports of what can only be called miraculous, like people li living without food for long, t long periods of time, or just living on, you know. So there's all of these reports, but it, it does depend. So, but yes, I, I would agree that once you get to the very high levels of consciousness, where you're becoming one with the highest vibrations, a lot of this stuff you're not subject to. And uh, the reports of miraculous healings are true which would seem impossible. But at those high connections of light, you know, like, like God, is, God is capable of doing the miraculous if, the, if it's God's will, you see. So those types of things. But in the state of, like, someone who hasn't done a lot of spiritual work, saying, can I do something that's pretty far out, um, uh, just by, you know, probably not very easily and, and, and also if they were doing it for an ego motive they wouldn't be able to do it. It's not like, you know, like I'm going to do a magician trick and stop breathing just to show off. Obviously the, you know, the, the grace of the universe will not, probably won't, uh, won't fulfill that for an ego purpose. Like a saint is not doing it, is not trying to, is not being orchestrated for glory, for ego glory or to do party tricks. Um, in that way, um, but I would share something you know, like uh, which boggled my ego. 
many, many years ago, when I got interested in um, Dr. Hawkins' muscle testing, and I remember I was running a Dr. Hawkins group. This was about 12, 14 years ago, a long time ago. And I had a group. There was me and there's two, two, two ladies. And I said, let's all try and do muscle testing and check it out, their muscle testing. And this is a true story. So anyone who's watching this video who has access to muscle testing will be able to tell you whether what I'm telling you is the truth or not. So we're doing this muscle testing, me and three other girls. And we all thought, OK, let's try and find out with muscle testing what each other's birthdays are. Yeah, you know, what each other's birthdays are. And we didn't know each other's birthdays. And we did it, and we got each other's birthdays without knowing each other's birthdays through muscle testing. And that is like, that was so mind-boggling. You know, that was so mind-boggling, that uh, muscle testing. So the laws which we govern when you go to these high, when you tune into these higher spiritual levels, it's, it is mind-boggling. But these are all collective belief systems. Uh, that, that we go to. Well, it's a great question. So, so the cancelling of beliefs, because I only went through this, is, you, is to shatter the beliefs you've got. You know, so when you say, like, I cancel my belief in, I don't know, um, in, in coughs, or I cancel my belief, belief in colds, or I cancel my belief that I never make money, or I cancel my belief that I always have bad relationships. Because the thing that's creating the bad relationship or a bad financial situation is your beliefs. Or, uh, so if you just say, I cancel my belief in, um, cancel my belief in bad relationships, or I cancel my belief my partners are always unfaithful, I'm an infinite being. So when you say, when you say, you cancel an negative belief and then see that disappear in the light, as if it doesn't disappear, see it just disappearing. And as you keep doing that, that belief system that's like materializing this thing will start to dissipate. Now, having said that, if you just do it once, it's probably not going to disappear. You know, it has to be like a regular thing. If you do the Course in Miracles, it's like an ongoing thing. And you should challenge it. Like if you have a belief system like, I never, you know, I always lose money. When it comes up into, th into consciousness, you should cancel the belief and keep canceling it. So you erode it. And that's how, you know, I lost a lot of illnesses. Uh, and uh, part of it, I did feel the feelings and other spiritual work and the Course in Miracles. So you, just doing that, like every morning and every evening, I would have a list of things I wanted to cancel, like I cancel my belief in gout. I mean, if I'm being a cancer belief in asthma. And I took it like, you know, and I knew if you do, if anyone tracks that muscle testing, you, you'll find, you'll find, you can check out these statements and you'll find that, you know, once you delete them, they tend to disappear. Not guaranteed, but they tend to disappear. Mm -hmm.